Hello, welcome to the video lecture series of the subject Basic Electrical Engineering. Myself, Pankil Chan, and in previous videos, you would have seen one topic that is AC circuits. And in that topic, you have seen so many videos based on AC circuit. In the last video, we have started the circuit analysis while we are applying the AC source. So in the last chapter, you have seen the analysis of the circuit having pure resistor. In this video, we are analyzing the same circuit but the element is now changed. And that element is nothing but the inner or you can say a coil. So we need to analyze a AC circuit having inductor as an element. Now you know that how inductor is made. You first see this circuit. In this circuit, we have connected one inductor over here. But here, in case of this inductor, we are calling this inductor as a pure inductor. Because inductor is made up of a number of turns found over any magnetic material. And that wire is must having some resistance. But in case of analyzing this circuit in simple manner, we are just assuming that there is no resistance. And if no resistance is there in this circuit, then that means this will behave as a pure inductor. So basically, there will be no losses due to the inductor. There will be only the storage of the energy in this inductor. So in this uh, case, let's start the equation of the voltage and current, relationship between the voltage and current, angle, phase angle between the voltage and current. So to understand the analysis of this AC circuit, let's consider this circuit having inductor as an element and we have applied one source of energy that is the AC source and Vt is the instantaneous value of the voltage we have applied to this circuit. And the equation of this voltage is nothing but Vt is equals to Vm sin omega t. And this voltage is the reference voltage that is applied to this inductor. So now, whenever we are applying this voltage to this inductor, then some current I will start flowing through this inductor. So now, our aim is to find the equation of this current. So whenever you are applying this voltage Vt is equal to Vm sin omega t in this inductor, we need to find the equation of the current. So let's start. So due to the self-inductance of the inductor, whenever you are applying the alternating voltage to any type of coil or you can say inductor, there will be the production of EMF. But the induced EMF in this inductor will be in the opposite direction to the applied voltage. Means if the flux is increasing, then the induced EMF will be set up in the direction opposite to that increment. If our flux is decreasing, then EMF will induce in the direction that will increase that flux. So basically we can say that the induced EMF will be in the opposite direction to the cause who has produced that EMF in that coil. So how we can define that EMF term in this inductor? So that the induced EMF, definitely the induced EMF is proportional to the rate of change of current flowing through this circuit. Because whenever the rate of change of current is more, the EMF induced is more. So we can say that induced EMF E is proportional to Ti by T. If we remove the proportionality, then we put some constant L, and L is known as the inductance of this coil. So we can define this term as the EMF induced in an inductor is equals to L divided by But you can see this equation. In this equation, we have put one negative sign. So why we have put it one negative sign in this equation according to Lenz law? Because this induced EMF in inductor will be in the opposite direction to the applied. So basically, we have equation as EB that is the back EMF or the EMF in any inductor is equals to minus L divided. Right. Now let's start deriving the equation of current. So the applied voltage was Vt, was the instantaneous voltage. 
and emf induced in that e inductor was eb so we can say that the applied voltage v will be always equals to the back emf or you can say that emf induced in that what why why they both are equal because we have considered it is a pure inductor and in pure inductor there are no losses so that means whatever the voltage you are applying to that circuit it will be always equals to the emf induced back in that coil so you can say that v is equals to eb but you must have to put the negative sign in either of this side of this equation why because if you have applied 50 volt to that circuit then 50 volt will be induced in that inductor but in the opposite direction so you can say that v is equals to minus eb now let's put the equation of eb in this equation so vt is equals to minus and in bracket you have to put the value of eb and the value of eb is nothing but the minus l divided by vt so basically there will be two negative sign in this equation and two negative sign will be cancelled out and the equation will be vt is equals to l di by d this is the equation you can see so now you can put the equation of vt also and the equation of vt is nothing but vm sin omega t so vm sin omega t is equals to l di by d so now you can use the variable separable method to find the value of current to this equation so now what we will do is vm sin omega t is equals to l di by dt so we will take dt term means time term in one side and we will take current term in other side so di will be as it is on that side and this l by dt will go on this side so it will be dt by l so you can see this, uh, see this equation as di is equals to vn sin omega t dt upon l. So di is our term, but di is in differentiation. So you, if you want to find the current i, then what you have to do is you have to integrate both sides of this equation. So if you integrate both sides of this equation, then it will be integration di is equals to in integration it will be vm sin omega t upon l into dt. But we know that vm by l is constant, so it will be outside that integration. So vm by l integration sin omega t dt, the simple term will be. So now we have to integrate, so integration of di will be i and e is equals to vm by l is constant and integration of sin omega t is nothing but minus cos omega t. If you are integrating this equation with respect to time then it will be omega in the denominator. So it will be minus cos omega t upon omega. So this is the equation. Now this omega is again constant so you can take outside from that bracket. So it will be minus vm upon omega l minus vm upon omega l into cos omega t. But you can see that our equation of voltage is in sinusoidal form. So we want to define our equation of current in sinusoidal manner only. So instead of minus cos omega t, you can put the sign also. So if you want to change the cosine term in the sinusoidal form and with the, that negative sign, then you can say that the sign 90 minus omega t will be there. Sin 90 minus omega t. Instead of cos omega t, it will be sin 90 minus omega t. If you put this negative sign inside that sinusoidal, the sine function, then it will be omega t minus 90. So now we have the equation of current as i is equals to vm upon omega l into sin omega t minus 90. And this Vm upon omega L is nothing but Vm upon XL. This omega L is known as the XL and XL is nothing but the inductive reactance. And this maximum voltage through the inductive reactance will always give you the maximum current. So finally we obtain the equation of current as I is equals to Im sin omega t minus 9. So now we have both the equation. This is the equation of voltage and this is the equation of current. This is the equation of voltage and this is the equation of current. So clearly look at this both equation. So from this both equation, if we are taking voltage as a reference, then you can say that this current lags behind our voltage by 90 degree because there is omega t minus 90. So that means minus 90 means current will lag behind our voltage by 90 degree. 
Now let's draw the waveform and phasor or you can say vector diagram of the voltage and current. So first see the waveform of the voltage and current. So on y axis we will take the voltage and current and on x axis we will take the angle theta or you can say omega t. So first we will draw the waveform of voltage and we have taken voltage equation as Vt is equals to Vm sin omega t. So that means this is our standard equation of the sinusoidal form. So we will start drawing the equation of voltage from 0 at pi it will complete its one full cycle. Uh, it's uh, at 0 to pi it will complete its positive cycle and from pi to 2 pi it completes its negative half cycle. So from 0 to 2 pi it completes its full cycle. Now the question is from where we will start drawing the waveform of current. So you can see that the waveform of current will start 90 degree after the voltage has been started. So voltage if started at 0 degree then current should be started at 90 degree after the voltage has been started. So from that 90 degree current will start. So after 90 degree means at 180 degree current will reach at maximum but voltage has completed. After 90 degree at 270 degree current will complete its full cycle while voltage is in negative maximum. And at 360 degree current will be in the negative maximum while voltage has completed its one cycle. And at 360 plus 90 degree our current will complete its full cycle. So before that 90 degree you can say that current might be in the negative maximum. So in this way you can draw the waveform of the voltage and current. If you want to draw the phasor diagram then what you have to draw first? You have to first draw the line that is our reference line. And our reference line is nothing but our voltage. So first you need to draw the voltage on the axis. So if you draw the voltage on the x axis then next you have to define the other quantity that is the current. And this vector diagram is always rotated in anti-clockwise direction. So if our voltage is there and if you draw at 90 degree downside that vector our current then you can say that voltage is rotating first and current is lagging behind that voltage vector by time. So in this way you can draw the phasor diagram also you can draw the waveform of the voltage and current. Now let's uh, define the term power. So you know that in case of power there are two types of power. One is the instantaneous power and another is the average power. So inductor, in case of pure inductor, if there is no resistance of coil is considered, then we can say that uh, no power is consumed by the inductor. So that means in one cycle, maybe inductor is taking power from the source and in another half cycle, it is giving power back to our source. So let's define the power. So to find the equation of power, we will first define the instantaneous power. So instantaneous power is nothing but the instantaneous voltage into instantaneous current. The two equations that we have defined just right back. So put the value of voltage and current in this equation. So Vt is equals to Vm sin omega t and Ig is equals to Im sin omega t minus 9. So if you solve this term sin omega t minus 90 again back in the cosine term then it will be Vt sin omega t into minus Im cos omega t because you have seen that minus Im cos omega t was the main term but uh, we wanted to convert it into sinusoidal form that's why we have put it the omega t minus 90. But now again we have back equation that is Vm Im sin omega t into in bracket minus cos omega t. If we take this negative sign outside of this bracket then we have this equation as minus Vm Im sin omega t into cos omega t. So if we multiply and divide this equation by 2. So if we multiply and divide this equation by 2 then we get this equation as minus 2 Vm Im sin omega t cos omega t upon so this 2 sin omega t cos omega t will give you the term sin 2 omega t. So we have the final equation of the instantaneous power as minus Vm Im by 2 into sin 2 omega t. So this is the final equation of the instantaneous power of the pure inductive circuit. Now let's find the average power consumed by this pure inductive 
field circuit. And as I told you in the starting of this theory, that is the average power consumed by the pure inductor should be zero because inductor is not consuming any power because it is a pure inductor. So let's integrate the equation of the instantaneous power in one complete cycle. So that means 0 to 2 pi. So P average is equal to in integration 0 to 2 pi P instantaneous into D omega t. We have to integrate this equation with theta or you can say omega t. But we have to divide this equation upon, we have to divide this equation by 2 pi. Why we are dividing this equation by 2 pi? Because we are finding the average power consumed by pure inductor in one complete cycle. So that's why we are dividing this equation by 2 pi. So let's put the equation of P instantaneous in this equation. So that equation is minus Vm Im by 2 into sin 2 omega t d omega t upon 2 pi. So this whole term will be outside. Which term will be outside? Vm Im upon 2 upon 2 pi. So it will be 4 pi. And this negative sign also you can take outside. So minus Vm Im upon 4 pi will be outside from this bracket. So only you need to integrate is the sin 2 omega t. And the integration of this term sin 2 omega t is nothing but minus cos 2 omega t upon 2 because you are integrating with respect to omega t. And you have to put the limit as 0 to 2. So first put the limit as a 2 pi and then put the limit as a 0. And you can take this negative sign outside. So it will be negative and negative it will be positive. So Vm Im upon 4 pi in bracket it will be cos 2 into 2 pi so that means 4 pi cos 4 pi minus now lower limit so cos 0 so cos 4 pi minus cos 0. and we know that cos 4 pi is 1 and we know that cos 4 pi is 1 and cos 0 is also 1 so there will be 1 minus 1 and 1 minus 1 is nothing but 0 so we have defined that the average power consumed by the pure inductive circuit is 0 so in this video, we have seen the analysis of the pure inductive circuit. So that means we have derived the equation of current, phase angle between voltage and current. We have also derived the waveform and phase diagram and also the power consumed by the inductor. In the next video, we will see the pure capacitive circuit. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned.